Hey guys, it's Mark LeBlanc. Welcome back to my shop. The last time I had a good uh, evening's worth of woodworking, the last thing I did before packing it in was building a rack for my wood turning tools. At least I thought I'd built something that was going to be halfway decent. As you can see, this thing is an epic, epic fail. So, first thing I'm going to do this evening is actually fix this and build something that's actually going to work properly. Let's do it. So what's wrong with this thing? Well, first thing I noticed when I put my tools in at the end is that for the longest tools at least, the wood and the handle is actually hitting the back brace of the tool rest or the uh, of the hanging rest and so what does it do well basically what you've got is you've got not enough support on the tools second thing is that the like the bottom base is four inches wide and it's about three quarters of an inch is high on the on the top that's not enough of an angle for the tools to actually rest and stay in place properly and third thing is this is a flat surface over here, so there's nowhere where the tools are actually hanging into grooves. So three things that I need to fix. So my decision has been to look at my longest tool, which is my bowl gouge here. And I figured that if I take, you know, at least 18 inches, then I'm hitting metal onto, uh, onto my, uh, my uh, gouge. So, this distance is going to be 18 inches long. That's the first thing I'll do. Second thing I'll do is I will make the base 6 inches wide or deep. So that'll give more of an angle for the tools. And the third thing I'll do is I'll figure out a way to put in some sort of a groove system on the top so that the tools actually line up and sit within proper grooves. Should be pretty straightforward to build, and it's a great project to use actually a bunch of scrap wood that I seem to be gathering quite a bit of these days. A couple of years ago, I built a coffee table for our living room made out of reclaimed barn wood. That's what I'm going to use for this project. I had enough left over for the following pieces. A 29 inch long by 6 inch wide base two sides that are 18 inches high and 6 inches wide, and two, 29, two pieces that are 29 inches long and 1 inch wide. One is going to be used to hang the rack on the wall, and the other is going to cradle the tools. <laughs> Having square sides would have been a bit boring. So I decided to taper the sides slightly. After taking careful measurements, I moved the pieces over to the bandsaw and rough cut the final shape of my sides. This next step could have been done with some sanding, but I prefer to use my planes to smooth out the edges. Made for a much nicer job in the end. <laughs> Using a 1 and 5 8 Forstner bit, I drilled a 1 quarter inch hole in the base. I had previously spaced and marked out where each hole would go. These holes will receive the base of the handle of each of my turning tools. This next operation was the trickiest. First I had to line up on one of my one inch wide pieces of wood all of the same reference points as the ones that are on the base. Next, I clamped down a sacrificial bore to my drill press. 
Next, I clamped the this one inch piece on top of that sacrificial board and lined it up as I wanted it. I then drew a reference line on the sacrificial board in order to keep a consistent alignment for all holes. And finally, using the same forcer bit as before, I drilled half moon shapes that would act as a cradle for my tools. Time for some assembly. I started by attaching the sides to the base, simply using pre-drilled holes, some good carpenter's glue, and one and a quarter inch screws. All right, so I'm at a point right now where both sides have been glued and screwed into the base. And just by using a couple of clamps, I've been able to put enough pressure so that the top part of the, uh, of the uh, rack is now held in place only with clamping pressure. And that gives me a chance to look at my measurements and make sure that everything's okay. And of course, it's not. You remember at the beginning I said I wanted to do something that was going to be 18 inches high. Well, this is 18 inches, and for my big bowl gouge, no problems. But I've got this really tiny little spindle gouge. Guess what? It's way too short for this type of apparatus. So what I'm going to try to do is just figure out a way if I can bring this um, top part down as far as I can so that I can still put in my bowl gouge and see if it's just enough for my little spindle gouge. I'm going to cross my fingers here. So at this level, my bowl gouge still sits into its cradle really, really well. Here it goes. By the barest of margins, the tiny spindle gouge fits. It's finally time to complete the assembly, both the cradle and the one inch stock that I will eventually use to attach the rack to the wall are attached with glue, pre-drill holes, and one and a quarter inch screws. I'm using four beefy drywall anchors to secure the rack to the wall. As you can see, it's positioned right next to where I operate my lathe. Man, this is set up. It's going to be really, really helpful. And now the moment of truth. A lot better than my initial failed experiment, isn't it? Yeah, a lot better. I love. 